Hey folks, how you doing? Papa Joe here. I was playing with this tablet, trying to figure out how in the world to go live on it and do the live streaming. Evidently, I only do that through my phone. So, that ain't it. This is it. I did the little test thing and uh, did not like how it turned out. Delete from YouTube. Alright. I'm debating on trying to do another little test on the live stream tonight. I know. I didn't give nobody no heads up. But, uh, Try and get it figured out. And I'd rather be doing it off of my tablet instead of that phone. And I ain't figured out why in the world it comes up with different YouTube nonsense on the tablet. Technology. It is a pain, folks. It is a pain. Whoever said computers are our friends, lied. Oh. I don't know what part of the world they wake up in. Or as old saying is, I don't know what color sky is in their world, but it ain't blue. No. Oh. Rough day. Here lately, the way I've been sleeping, my hips been out when I get up of the morning. Uh, which might be part of why I'm grumpy. Pain to do that to you. But, uh, <coughs> I'm going to have to go see Mama's Bone Cracker. Let that young lad work on me a little bit. Uh, finally got rolling this morning after talking to y'all, and, uh, made it through the scale house, stopped to weigh my wagon and fuel, just past the scale house there in Mississippi, McComb, Mississippi, oh, I fueled I didn't put on a whole lot, but I put on enough to get me up here. I no more started rolling again. And this computerized truck, it has a gauge over here for your fuel filter. Now I ain't got a clue what that nonsense is on there. But I know when it gets up 15, which I assume that's 15%, I don't know. It has some other nonsense in there, but it don't look English to me. But a little red light comes on and it flashes a message on your dash. Fuel filter blocked. Or right, what does it say? Fuel filter inspect and replace. So I call up the shop and talk to the shop manager. Now, I done hit the next exit. I wasn't a couple miles away from that Loves. I figured I'd picked up water. What would you figure? You just fuel and all of a sudden it comes on? I said, you want me to go back to that place? Now I just limp it on in here. Let's fix it at the yard. I'm like, 555 miles. Yeah, just watch it. If it gets any worse, let me know. Really. I made it. I was losing a little bit of power on some of the hills, but I made it. It was very annoying. It would go off and come back on, and I'd clear it. It'd come back on. It was very annoying, but I made it. 
Now, I figured I told them it would be 6.30, 7 o'clock before I got here. It was 6.30. I figured they would have someone come up or somebody would be here to change it so I could roll on. No. They want me to sit there until they open shop in the morning at 8 o'clock. I'm just talking to Grandma. Uh, what is the difference between that shipper holding me up last night and the company holding me up tonight? To me, there ain't no difference. You know, okay, I couldn't have really rode tonight. I uh, didn't have enough hours to make it anywhere. I had right at an hour, just under an hour. However, I could get up early in the morning and go trucking. Can't if I'm sitting here waiting on them. So they're going to hold me up a minimum of four hours. So maybe three if Steven comes in early and he goes ahead and changes my filter instead of doing his yard check and all the stuff he has to do. I got a feeling he'll want to do his yard check and get that knocked out. That way when the office gets in, he can hand them their paper. Which means I have to wait on the other boys to come in, which is 8 o'clock. They don't like overtime over here, so they won't do nothing until 8 o'clock. <coughs> that being the case, it's going to hold me up three and a half hours. By the time they get done, which won't take five minutes. That's what's aggravating. I'm waiting 14 hours for a five-minute job. So then by the time I get hooked to stuff and ready to roll, or if I was going to roll in the morning, I'd go ahead and hook to my trailer and I'd be ready to roll. When I wake up, I'm gone. But they're going to pull this into the shop and they don't want a trailer on it. I already know. So really, what is the difference between your own company holding you up and a shipper or receiver holding you up? To me, it ain't no difference. But Lord forbid the company to have to spend any extra money. Now, I like the company. And this ain't the only company that does this nonsense. But, you know, when you really break it down, what's the difference? If the truck's being held up, the truck's being held up. So, but yeah, I'm trying not to be a grumpy old fart. I got some pulled pork back there. I think that's what I'm going to have. I don't know if I want to do that or have a Frito pie. Maybe I have a Frito pie with pulled pork. Oh, goodness. Well, I'll tell you, for those that watch this right away, and I've got a few that watch these as quick as they go up, I might try to do a live stream here in a few minutes I'm going to warm up my food and eat and whatnot. I think what I'm going to start doing is try if I'm going to do a live stream I, uh, and one of my guys told me one of my subscribers told me today why don't you just say if you're going to do it it's going to be between these times and actually I've thought about it and that makes a little bit of sense so, uh, I don't know what that boy just sent me, but I think, uh, I would tell you between eight and 10 central time, everything central time with me. That's what zone I'm on. Well, I'm going to shoot for nine, but cases like tonight, it's almost eight o'clock. So I think I'm going to shoot for 9 o'clock, and I'll tell you all between 8 and 10. 
So if you're interested in catching me, watch for me. And I'll try to do it pretty consistent the next tomorrow night will probably not happen. I tell you that now. Tomorrow night is Wednesday night. Uh but I'll try to do it consistent through the week. The weekend's out. Uh, I'm at home, and I ain't going to uh, disrupt Grandma's life. She ain't real crazy about me doing videos with her in them. She's very shy, we'll say, on that stuff. So, uh, I mean, she literally goes out of her way to, don't come in here, bug. Go to that bright light over yonder. Go to the light. Go to the light. Uh, I'm going to put that window up before he comes in that side. But she goes to great pains to not be in one of my videos when I'm taping around the house. So, and I'm just not going to subject her to a whole lot of that. It just ain't right. This YouTube thing is my thing and not her thing. And I don't want to force her into my thing. So that's probably why she's spoiled. I don't force her into anything. Uh, then tomorrow night with this load that I've got, going down to Houston, getting out as late as I am tomorrow, I'm not going to make it in there to deliver. So that means I'll have to deliver Thursday morning. So uh, I'm going to make it go by the house. Unless something drastic happens, I'm going to make it go by the house. Spend the night with Mama. And see if I can agitate her and get her flustered. and Get up Thursday morning. Go deliver. Lemonade, you know. They're giving me a box of lemons, so lemonade. It is what it is. So, uh, here in a few minutes, I actually need to make tomorrow night studying the word. And, uh, American Nomad, don't get upset, because I'm going to use our little deal as part of my lesson for tomorrow night. It uh, struck me earlier this morning before I seen your comments and he did not leave me. For those that uh, watched yesterday's uh, video, the one that got so upset with me, he didn't leave. Uh, me and him chatted a little bit today. And he allowed it. He had the same deal that I had. That he had woke up grumpy, and when he watched my video, the same thing. Where when I read the comments, I got irritated. Well, when he watched my video, he was grumpy enough that it irritated him. And we both was a couple grumpy parts yesterday, folks. That happens, you know. I think if I uh, was around somebody that woke up all small and bubbly and cheery every morning, I'd choke them. You know? Damn it, wake up grumpy once in a while. You know? But uh, we kissed and made up. And I tell y'all now, you don't want to kiss him. He's a sloppy kisser. No, don't go there. But now he's been broke down. Shit. Since before the weekend. And uh, I think he's in Southern California of all places. And he's going stir crazy in a motel room. Anybody that's been out here for any length of time and has broke down, you know how it gets. I mean, you're a truck driver. You're used to moving. You ain't used to being stuck. I mean, the first day or two, it's all right, cool. But after three, four, seven days, it's like, grrr. You start going stir crazy. And that's where he's at. He's starting to go stir crazy. 
Well, and I told him, well, I was doing YouTubes then. I don't think I was doing them near as much as I am now. But uh, y'all remember me breaking down in Phoenix? And I think I was down, what, five or six days? I forget. Oh, it seemed like forever. Yeah. So, uh, so, yeah, I can relate. And that ain't the only breakdown I've ever had. But it was one of the longest ones. And usually a breakdown's 24, 48 hours type deal. Maybe three days at the tops. You know, there ain't a whole hell of a lot they can't do. They can rebuild a whole damn motor in three days. They can rebuild a whole damn motor in two days. So. And then his deal, what's aggravating to him is he told them what it was doing and they're checking everything but. He's having a steering issue. You know, and hell, they're checking the rear drives. I don't know that literally. But I remember from his messages, they ain't checking that. You know, and he's like, well, how about an alignment? Have you even checked the alignment? No. And that is exactly why I was talking to one of our drivers today. Now, Larry's up to, I don't know, 55 trucks, maybe. And uh, here in the last month or so, he bought a hook. So he can go hook to a truck and bring it back home. Simply because, uh, well, Arizona, they got hammered with a $10,000 bill, changed all the fuel injectors and this, that, and the other. And when they got done and had the $10,000 bill, the truck still wasn't run right. And he's like, what the hell? So, and he's had a couple of, well, my truck when I broke down in Phoenix. Actually, I didn't break down in Phoenix. I broke down in uh, Lake Havasu. No, Quartzite. Broke down in Quartzite. And they told me from Lake Quartzite to uh, Phoenix. Now, that's pretty good tow. And they had my truck in there, like I said, four or five days. They rebuilt the transmission. And when I got it, I took off. I lost my load. Somebody else had to come in and get my load and all this. Uh, then I had to get theirs and go take their empty trailer and go get a load and drive back. Within two weeks, the truck is really acting up again. And I'm telling them about it. They had me stop, I think, in Kilgore, Texas. At Bobo. It was a Bobo. And they did reprogramming on the computer and all this stuff. And I took off again. Less than a week, I'm having troubles out of this automatic again. Which I like the automatics. Uh... They took it to our people over here, actually, to Kenworth. Uh, and Kenworth started dealing with it. They found out that when they rebuilt it in Phoenix, they didn't put the transmission fluid in it. It was running practically dry. Huh. Wonder if that would have anything to do with it. So after a couple episodes like that, he decided to buy a hook. When a truck goes down and it ain't something real simple, he gonna send somebody after it. <laughs> My wife thought it was kind of crazy, but I'm like, you're talking about $2 a mile minimum towing, and that would be both directions. Yeah. You know, them towing bills get real high on these trucks. And a $10,000 repair bill and it still don't work, and who knows what it cost on my truck. I never did here. But you can recoup the cost of a hook pretty damn quick. Now, I imagine what they'll do is they'll hook another truck, take it out there on the hook, drop and swap, and bring the bad truck back. And he can afford to do that a hell of a lot cheaper than some of these robbery bills we get out there. 
And don't think for a minute that just because it's a dealer that you're not going to get ripped off. You will. The $100 an hour and, and the book says this many hours and you still get ripped off, especially if you're a company that's not local. Where he can get it back here and he's got the good old boy network going around here, born and raised right here. His truck company's been here for 30 years. His daddy was here in trucks, cement trucks and whatnot. So they're well established around here. So, yeah, he can save some money with that hook. So, I debated on talking to him about being his hook man, but I don't want to. I thought about it, and I don't want to. So... <coughs> I don't want to have to get down there and be dropping drive shafts and all that. That's dirty. I'm too big of a boy to have to be getting underneath trucks. And I don't care what part it is on a big truck. It's heavy. So. It is what it is what it is. And actually, if you're going to be doing that kind of stuff, you need to pull the axle out too. So. They're not as heavy as the drive shaft, but they ain't light either. I guess actually you could do either one, huh? I don't know. That's why I'm not a dragon wagon operator. But anyhow, rabbit trail. I think I'm going to, uh, bust this thing off and get back here and figure out what I'm going to do for dinner. Like I said, here in about an hour, about 9 o'clock central time, I'm going to try doing a, another live stream. So if you can, make yourself available. I'd really like for somebody to come in so that I can know if I'm doing it right or not. It's got a little counter there that tells me if people come in. And it's got a little message bar down there. Supposedly you can leave me messages. We'll see. I just want to get it up and operating right. So, Y'all remember, God loves you. So do I. We'll get this live stream nonsense worked out. Or we won't. Have a good evening. Bye.